Welcome to the SOB Radio Show, where we have fun, interesting guests, and hot topics. Each week, we offer insights into music, fashion, health, fitness, and humor. Do you have the perfect guest for us to interview? I want to know. Drop me a line on our Facebook page at Spunky Old Broad 1, or reach out to me on our website at SpunkyOldBroad.com. And now, back to the show. My guest today is Lorraine Hobbing, and Lorraine is an eternal optimist with contagious <laughs> enthusiasm and a passion to change the world. She recently created an online series called Never Too Late Ever, and I have to say that I was a guest on that, so I was very happy about that. <laughs> and it was created to inspire others to make the next chapter of their lives the best chapter ever. Lorraine has lost over 112 pounds from her highest weight of 275 pounds, and she reached an aha moment when she turned 60 years when she realized her life was two-thirds over. She took a leadership development class, dealt with past trauma to begin to lose weight again, and has been on a mission ever since. She's been a realtor for the past 15 years, lives in Washington State with her husband of 41 years, and has a son, a daughter, and a granddaughter. (laughs) <laughs> well, welcome, Lorraine, to SOB Radio. Thank you, Dr. Gale. It's it's an absolute pleasure, and I, I loved having you on my program. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, you know, I know that you are so enthusiastic about this um, uh, Never Too Late Ever, and you know that's my philosophy. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm sure I'm a lot older than you are, and uh, I don't ever think it's too late. I'm always trying to come up with new <laughs> ideas and new ways to do things. So, um, You're pretty amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what made you decide to create the online series Never Too Late Ever? Because that's not an easy thing to do to get all these different people to participate. Yeah. So um, in in your introduction, you were saying that I had an aha moment at 60, and I really, really did. When I turned 60, it all of a sudden dawned on me that if I was to live uh, another 30 years, uh, you know, if God blessed me with 30 years, I would uh, already be two-thirds of my life would have been over. And I started to think about all the things and all the goals that I'd set out to do. And they just were kind of laying there. And I started to think, you know what? I can make a difference. I've always had some uh, a bit of a passion inside to make a difference in inspiring and motivating others. But here were my goals all laying on the, you know, like losing weight, exercising. All of those things were just kind of laying on the floor. And so I... I decided at that point I needed to make a difference. I needed to start with myself. uh, And then uh, with that passion, uh, I I decided, well, you know, it would be kind of cool to be able to inspire others. And that's where the Never Too Late series uh, started because I wanted other people to inspire other people that it is never, ever too late. You inspire me because uh, you obviously <laughs> are living life, you're living life to the fullest and your next chapter, you are living inspired. And that's how I wanted to inspire others. So that's where well, it started. Well, you know, it's interesting. Sometimes I think about, oh, my gosh, Gail, you know, uh, you only have X number of years left. And then my son will say to me, Mom, Grandma lived to 99 and a half, so you really got double that. (laughs) (laughs) 99 and a half? She she almost Yeah, and she was, she was. She was feisty until the end. She was, uh, you know, she had her full, full faculties, and she she was shouting out orders from the hospital bed. So uh, you know, my... Yeah. <laughs> and you know what, Gail? This is, this is what I've always noticed. If somebody is feisty, I've seen them live a long time because that drive and that, um, that uh, I'm not sure what it is, that determination is is there and it keeps them going and uh so i had a feisty grandma that also i think she lived to be uh 98 (laughs) well and my son keeps saying to me we have the same chronological timeline because my husband died at uh, 74 my father died at 65 Uh, my husband's father died at 76 but 
my husband's mother died at 94 and my mom died at 99. So he said, we are on the same chronological time <laughs> frame. And I said, him, I don't know about that. But anyway, um, but you also uh, made this decision to lose weight. Uh, and, you know, losing uh, 112 pounds and now you're back on schedule to lose more. Um, how did you come up with this decision to do it uh, and do it once and for all time? Okay, so um, in the introduction, again, you talked about the uh, leadership development course I went through, and that was really transformational for me because it allowed us to go back to our past. And in my past, I had some trauma related uh, to um, two losses in my life. And I loved, loved and adored my daddy. And he died uh, suddenly at, in a, a tragic accident at the age of 11. And when you were 11. Yes, yeah. yes, when I was 11. Sorry. And I, up until that time, I was just this happy, go lucky, swinging on the swings, making. Uh, making everybody laugh. I loved having my friends around and, and doing things for them and making them laugh. And when my father tragically died, we were very much alike. And so we were very affectionate. He was optimistic and, and positive. And uh, when he died, it, it blew my world apart. My mom uh, uh, bless her. I love her dearly, but she was never brought a, up in a home where you were affectionate. In fact, I, I, she wouldn't even say, I love you unless I tickle her as she got older. I'd say, mom, now, come on, tell me, tell me you love me. Um, whereas my dad was the, the complete opposite. And there were six of us in the house. And so when he died, it was such a tragic loss for me. And then I had an older brother that um, began to tease me. He had always been jealous of my relationship with my daddy. And so he began to tease me. And he I was maybe, oh, maybe five, ten pounds overweight at that time. So he would start saying, fatty, fatty, two by four, can't get through the bathroom door. And if I ate a cookie or anything, he, I mean, he was just... Um, just uh, relentless. And even to this day, now when I talk to, uh, to friends um, that knew us as a family, he, she, they always say, well, I remember Albert, how much he teased you. So it was not a figment of my imagination. So in that time, I began to bury myself um, Daddy and I loved to have ice cream every single night, and I'd sit on his lap, even at, still at 11 years old, I remember, and that was our treat together. So after he died, I began um, to eat ice cream in secret, because if I dared eat, eat it in front of my brother Albert, he would uh, certainly uh, tell the whole world, tell the, the whole house. He sometimes would scream things out into the, uh, out into the yard, too. And uh, so, so you had a homegrown bully, right? You had a bully right in your own house. Right, right. And and I've had a hard time. I had a hard time saying that he was a bully. But now that I'm older and I've gone through some transformational um, development, I realized that he was a bully. He didn't know different, but that what he was a bully. And so I started see, uh, taking uh, bowls of ice cream down into my room. I remember this. I remember the turquoise, <laughs> turquoise little, I think they were called Melmac bowls. And I'd uh, uh, uh -huh. eat my ice cream, put it under the bed. Then I'd listen for him in the morning. And as soon as I didn't hear him, I'd sneak up uh, um, upstairs and then wash the bowl out before he found out. And those things that you do in secret are the things that will um, destroy you. And I started doing that in secret and putting the layers, this is how I, I, I felt like I was doing, is I was putting layers on to cover my hurt. Because daddy, the one that believed in me, the one that adored me, was suddenly gone, and I was feeling the loss, so I had to cover up. And, and so I lost that um, little girl, in essence, Dr. Gale, I lost her 
um, slowly right after uh, my father died. So that's you know, kind I of the start of it. Realize, I don't think people realize how their words or their actions or their whatever can can follow you for so many years and have such an impact on you. And uh, that's why I'm so so glad that the uh, against bullying movement is so important now because it just has such a, a terrible effect. So, um, so what has made the difference this time in your decision? Okay. Yeah. So I what mean, did you gain the, the weight back or did you, you're just wanting to lose more weight? Well, I, I so then I, I ballooned up to, eventually I ballooned up to 275 pounds. And then I lost, um, I, I lost 100. Then I gained it back because I felt like I had, well, I gained almost all of it back. So I went back up to about 240. And I had not dealt with this issue with my brother. And so when I went to this transformational um, uh, development course, they they wanted us to go back there. And I had thought about it before and I'd talked about it before. But I actually went back there, faced it, that he really actually was a bully to me. And I said it out loud because I couldn't say it out loud because it was like, oh, that's my brother. I, I would hurt his feeling. He He's in heaven now, but... Um, I actually had to face it, say he bullied me, he didn't know better, he didn't know better, and I had to eventually forgive him. I had to forgive my daddy, even though he didn't intentionally <laughs> die, there was some, he, I felt abandoned, if you know what I mean. So I went back right. there, dealt with those issues, faced them, and said, these, my brother didn't know better. I forgive you. I actually was angry at my mom. I said, mom, I'm angry at you that you didn't stick up for me. And then I realized, and then I came to the realization. Yeah, but she didn't have any love herself. So we pass these things on. But what we learn, what, what happens to us in our childhood, I think is traumatic because we don't have the skills um, to work through it. So when I went back there, it freed me. It totally, absolutely freed me because I absolutely forgive anything that has happened in my past. It is up to me to make a difference in my life now. It's not, and we can't blame people or be victims. It's up to me. So that's what I, I, I just applaud that. I applaud that so much, Lorraine, because um, first of all, you don't control anybody else. The only person who controls anybody is yourself. And forgiveness is really, really important. Um, I, I have not had that many people uh, that I have really put in my pocket as saying I don't like those people. But for the few that, that have been there, I really practiced forgiveness. It was not easy, but I practiced it, and it did make a big difference. And I know from the people that I've worked with that it makes a big difference because there are so many women, because you know I work with women 50 plus, that there are so many women who are hanging on to things from their childhood, from parents that are no longer here, that uh, that someone said in an offhand way and they took right. deep down. And so the work that you've done, I'm so pleased to know that it had that kind of of effect of, of freeing you. And right. as you forgave your brother, did he have any idea of what he was doing to you? I mean, uh, did you ever have a conversation with him about it? Yeah, I did. And he uh, probably about 15, 20 years ago, and he apologized in a way that he only knew how he would kind of well, you know, I'm sorry, I, I, you know, I realized. And so it didn't feel, um, um, it wasn't until I actually took responsibility to forgive him later on. He just kind of said half-handedly, oh, I'm sorry about all the, you know, all the years of that. Because like I said, other people knew of our family and they knew how he would um, get on me phys physically, 
by tickling me until I, I was blue in the face. I mean, yelling things at me, even at school and that kind of stuff. So he did kind, so we did have that conversation because somebody suggested it, but it wasn't the same as when I actually went back and realized that he too was hurting from something, um, you know, uh, uh, something was hurting him. So when I realized that it was, it was like I was set, it was like somebody opened the, the prison doors because Albert is not responsible to where, to where I am now. I am a hundred percent responsible. So no matter what has happened in our past with forgiveness, total forgiveness, it's not, it's not, well, I just forgive you. It's I forgive you, and I understand that you were not whole when you did that to me. Um, so, uh, yeah, that has literally set me free to realize that I'm responsible for me, and I'm the one that can make a difference, and it is never too late. <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting because very often bullies have been bullied themselves or have some other issue, and the only way that they can prove how great they are is by attacking other people who are either weaker than they are or in a different circumstance than they are. So um, it's it's wonderful that, you know, at least at this point, you know where you are and uh, so forth. So I know that it, um, it had to affect your self-esteem, but the fact that you are, you created this series, you know, it's never too late ever, uh, that, that shows the impact that you're having on, on other people. And I'm curious, what kind of reaction uh, did you get from the series? Uh, what did people say to you? What did they love about it? What did, they, what did it free them up for? Well, what, what happened is people, um, in fact, I just got a, a private message just uh, before I got on your show. Uh, what has happened with people, because there were different topics that we talked about, um, I think it has inspired people to look into their own lives and say, hey, what, how can I make the next chapter the best chapter of my life? Maybe I haven't always lived up to what I thought my life would look like up until now. And m now I can make a difference. I think the other thing it's given is people hope. And when you have hope, it's like light. Okay, there's light at the end of the tunnel. I, I can lose, say somebody out there has a large amount of like I did to lose weight, 100 pounds. It gives them hope. I think it inspired them and motivated them that they can still make a difference. Because I think sometimes people at, our, at the age of 60 or even older resign and say, okay, well, my life's almost over. What's, what's the use? So I wanted to ignite a fire in them, and I believe I did that from their response. I also did a survey, um, and uh, they, they got to uh, give me feedback on what they would like. So I'm doing a, 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 you know, an, a, another season, season two, uh, to oh, great. continue That's wonderful. to inspire them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, um, you brought up something else that's very important. You talked about losing this weight, and I know that you feel it's important to lose weight slowly. And the reason for that is exactly what you said in the beginning, and that is most people who lose weight, uh, and a lot of weight especially, go right back up again because they haven't really modify their thinking or modify their habits. And so uh, it's a difficult, and when um, you did not, but many people, when they gain the weight back, they gain more than what they lost. So tell me what happened in your mind um, that you this time decided to lose weight slowly. Well, okay, so I'm, I'm in uh, Weight Watchers, so that has been really helpful for me because that's like a lifestyle. So when you say I, I'm losing weight slowly, it is. It's about a half a pound to a, a pound a day. I mean, not a day. Well, wouldn't that be wonderful? <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh-huh. And, and it has been slow. So I... Um, I, I call myself a turtle in losing weight. I choose wisely. I choose uh, mostly unprocessed foods, whole foods. And now that I look back, 
and it, this this journey has been slow. I am so thankful, Dr. Gale, because this is my mind was having a, had been having a hard time catching up with it. And if you lose fast, I think that you can't, especially when you got a lot a lot of weight to lose. So here's an example. The other day, I was uh, laying in bed and I could feel my rib, and people don't realize it unless they're re- really overweight. If you've been overweight like I was for the last 45, 50 years, uh, like 100, over 100 pounds, and by the time I lose all my weight, it'll be about 150, you feel these physical changes and it can almost be scary. I thought, oh my gosh, this is, or I go by a mirror and I go, look at the mirror and I go, oh my goodness, that's, that, that's me. And so I am glad it's been slow because I've been able to catch up with it, that this is really happening because it almost at this point, um, and I will tell you this, I've, I've signed up with a trainer this last week um, because a person could start sabotaging themselves if they're not careful going, well, this isn't me. I'm, I, you start to feel like I've taken all these lake layers off and now I'm almost feeling a little naked and this is this is not my body and so you want to almost get comfortable again and so that's why I signed up for a trainer because I, I want this last leg I am continuing on until I get to my healthy weight um so I think well I think that's great yeah that's yeah. that's perfect you know it's funny because I worked out two hours this morning before I uh <laughs> you I got are amazing. to do the show well I, I just I mean with all my, I've always worked out, but if it didn't work out now, um, I wouldn't move. I mean, I have so many because I've had so many surgeries. But the point is, uh, you did it. And some people would say, oh, it's too late. I know with my husband, I tried to say, honey, don't think of 100 pounds. Just think of one pound a week, one right. pound a week. And so, I, right. But it was too overwhelming for him, and he, he just never, you know, was able to do it. So, um but isn't it interesting that you, you go by a mirror and you say, oh, my gosh, who is that person? And is that really me? And, uh, you know, <laughs> it, right. does, it does seem, yeah, it does. And I think it's incredible that you were able to do that and to, you know, keep the, the flow. But it's also so important because some people would get to a point where they've carried that weight for so long and say, it is too late. And I love the fact that, you know, your theme is it is never too late, ever. Right. And that right. is the key. That is the key to everything. And I, I'm really very proud of you. I, I've i never really, I, I, you know, I was always skinny as a kid. So um, I think I graduated college. I was 103 or something. But it's so funny because wow. even at that rate, I was a, I was a um, dancer and I had a partner and he's still, he's still five foot six and he's still 122 pounds. And nobody <laughs> ever said how skinny I was. They all said how strong he was because he would pick me up and throw me around. And no one ever said, oh, how it's because you're so little. No, it was because <laughs> he was so strong. And I thought that was so funny, you know. Yeah. But, how, tall um, are, how tall he, are you, Dr. Gale? I'm a, now I'm probably five one and a half. I think I was five two and a half at the time. I'm down to five one and a half. So, uh, but We're the I same uh, did. Put, are we okay? Okay. Well, should I ask you how much you weigh now? I am about one um, sixty eight. So I I want to lose at least uh, another forty, um, maybe forty five. Okay. I have to because I'm extremely tiny bone. Um, so I'm not giving up until it's the healthy weight, um, whatever, whatever that feels like on me. I don't need to be, uh, you know, hot and sexy, although that might be nice. <laughs> I was just going to say, why not? You know, <laughs> exactly. but no, I, and, and yeah, I mean, this is really 
um, you know, I think, I just think it's a very inspiring message, message for our listeners because, you know, some people do give up when they get to a certain age and there are a lot of people that get up and give up when they're younger too. So, uh, I just think it's a really healthy message, uh, for everybody to get. Now we're going to sign off for this part in about a minute. So, um, I just want to say to our listeners, you know, Lorraine has taken on some very heavy projects, not only the loss of weight, but the series that she did of Never Too Late Ever. And I think that it's very important to know that it's just never, it is just never too late. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I I really applaud you for that, Lorraine. And, um, you you know, I I think that uh, it is a, a, and people should know, by the way, what you eat is where you get your pounds. Exercise is for inches. It's not for pounds. So we'll come back. We'll talk about it a little bit later. Uh, we're going to sign off for part one. Hang on. We'll be back in just a few minutes with part two. Thank you.